Welcome to another Dark Corners Top 10. With a little help from our Twitter followers, we're counting down through our top 10 vampires who aren't Dracula. <laughs> When we posed the question to our Twitter followers, we did get a lot of responses that were, let's say, on a certain theme, and it would be wrong not to include at least one. And now, for your viewing pleasure, kneel and worship at the feet of Santanico Pandemonium. We went with the improbably named Satanico Pandemonium in From Dusk Till Dawn because... Well, because in many ways we are just as bad as our followers. Welcome to slavery. Although the film Nosferatu and its production company spent some time trying to convince everyone that Count Orlok is not Dracula, the legal system felt differently. And let's be honest, we all know he's Dracula and therefore not eligible. We considered including Kurt Barlow from Salem's Lot, who is so obviously inspired by Orlok, but then we had a thought. In the behind-the-scenes horror Shadow of the Vampire, it's Max Schreck, the actor who played Orlok, who is the vampire. So we've included him. Just to be clever. Why not the script girl? I'll eat her later. Comedy vampires are at best a mixed bag. Vampires are no laughing matter. <laughs> For every fearless vampire killers, there's half a hundred weight of Dracula dead and loving it. Rockula. If it wasn't the Red Cross donation, this vampire would die. And vampire in Brooklyn dragging the average down. I already had Italian. Fortunately, comedy has managed to produce at least one really memorable vampire. I go for a look which I call dead but delicious. Perhaps it's wrong to include Jermaine Clement's Vladislav while ignoring Viago, Deacon and Petir, <laughs> who all shine in Taika Waititi's What We Do in the Shadows. Look, the ghost cat. But he deserves it, if only for the line about doing his dark bidding. Just leave me to do my dark bidding on the internet. What are you bidding on? I'm bidding on the table. Some vampire films defy easy categorization. Just because you like From Dusk Till Dawn doesn't mean you'll like Carl Theodore Dreyer's Vampire, a slow, mysterious meander through vampire lore, resolving little and explaining less. But for a vampire who stands out in such a film, you've got to go to Elizabeth Bathory, as played by Delphine Seyrig in Daughters of Darkness. I Elizabeth, you are an innocent. <laughs> a film open to endless interpretations concerning Nazism, the seductiveness of glamour, and the decadence and downfall of Western civilization. Everyone knows that vampires are cool, and cinema is almost spilling over with cool boys who know how to dress and how to seduce their victims with little more than a wink. Look, I know he's a vampire! Into this category fall such greats as Fright Night's Jerry Dandridge, The Lost Boy's David, and Blade's Blade. But we opted for perhaps the coolest, best dressed, and of course the funkiest vampire of them all, William Marshall's Blackula. Good evening, gentlemen. His films may not be the best, but he himself casts a long, cool shadow. Uh... It would be wrong not to include Carmilla or Mircala Karnstein, created by author J. Sheridan Le Fanu in a story that predates Dracula by 26 years. Over the years, the blood-drinking Countess has been portrayed in one guise or another in various films, notably by Annette Stroyberg in Blood and Roses, and by Ingrid Pitt in The Vampire Lovers, Jutta Stensgaard in Lust for a Vampire, and Katya Wyeth in Twins of Evil, the three films that make up Hammer's Karnstein trilogy. Also by Sylvia Coloca in the truly dire lesbian vampire killers, which should be avoided at all costs. <laughs> Vampires and Art House go together surprisingly well because there's nothing like eternal life for allowing a director to explore the pointlessness of existence, especially when continuing that pointlessness relies on taking others' lives. We considered Lily Taylor's Kathy Conklin in Abel Ferrara's philosophical The Addiction. What the hell were you thinking? 
and Tom Hiddleston and Tilda Swinton's Adam and Eve in Jim Jarmusch's Only Lovers Left Alive. But in the end, we went for another double act, Gemma Arterton and Saoirse Ronan as Clara and Eleanor in Neil Jordan's flawed but gorgeous version of Moira Buffini's Byzantium. Clara, get out. How could you bring someone here? <laughs> Eleanor, we have to leave. At number three... I am the Count. They call me the Count because I love to count things. I don't care what you think. We're including him. What? Nothing? Nothing happened. Where's the confetti? Perhaps it's just sentimentality, but we had to put the hunger high on the list. I'm a young man. Do you understand? I'm a young man. Just for the presence of the great David Bowie, who plays John Blaylock alongside Catherine Deneuve's Miriam in this stylish film by the none more stylish Tony Scott. What have you done to me? I've given you something you never dare dream of. What? Everlasting life. While it's not for everyone and Bowie himself expressed reservations, it remains an original take on vampirism and Bowie is always a magnetic screen presence. Forgive me. And at number one in our list, as well as the film most people suggested on Twitter, Eli from Let the Right One In. Surely the greatest modern vampire film and the greatest modern vampire. Eli reinvents our perceptions of vampirism for the new millennium, an outsider who is far from being a cool loner, a love story that doesn't rely on hypnotic eroticism, a genuinely touching character who we root for not because they are the fascinating bad boy or well-stacked bad girl, but because we care. Turns out the most original thing a vampire can be is a person. Thanks for watching and thanks to our Patreon supporters for bearing with us while we got this one together. These were our choices combined with the results of a Twitter poll, but who did we miss out? Who would you add? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe.